The next speaker, who also will talk about the Chance project, and is a partner that you already have heard of, is Dr. Antonella Samoja. Uh, she works for University of Bologna. Uh, she's part of the coordination team of the Chance project, and uh, she has performed the economical analysis of Chance. She's a researcher um, there, and she's specialized in uh, subject areas like the value chain analysis, uh, agro-food chain competitiveness, uh, sustainability or food and healthy diets um, as examples of it. And she's going to talk about industry and retailer perspectives. Thank you, thank you very much. Well, thank you uh, to the audience. Um, especially I feel very much embedded into this project. So uh, I really appreciate if you have feedbacks on this part, especially because through the whole day, I've heard a lot of what the industry does or doesn't do, or what they should do, and uh, how bad they are, and they are kind of somehow the enemy. So let's see what they think, so that we actually see if there is a common point where we can meet each other and somehow shape the future, as the first speaker was saying. OK, very briefly, I'll give you a policy framework. Uh, Somehow it was already covered by the previous speakers. Uh, NCDs are definitely uh, becoming the leading causes of deaths worldwide. This is uh, very strongly in the agenda of all the international organizations. Uh, the European Union, WHO, um, they are involved in some of the JPIs as we saw in the morning. And uh, they definitely see uh, that the only way to um, to decrease the costs of the healthcare is really to tackle this problem and to work on the prevention of, uh, of this kind of uh, health uh, diseases. So the overall policy objective at the end of the day is to guarantee a food offer that, is, that includes production and distribution that is retailing. So I'd really like to, to focus the attention on these two actors because whenever we speak of the food in industry, we actually have two different actors with two different stakes and they actually play a kind of power struggle among the two of them. So we have the production, so the manufacturing and the retailing. Um, so the focus is to try to see if we can match the food system with healthy food and nutrition, which obviously do not necessarily go together since uh, the final objectives are two different uh, uh, areas. In the past, the focus was very much on the consumers. So what we've called the ROPs, the low income, so the responsibility was very much put on them, whether they were motivated, where, whether their diet was adequate, uh, if they trusted the food, the label, the accessibility, etc. Whereas now, the responsibility is pushed to, to another actor, which is the producers and distributors. So these are the two uh, actors along the food chain which receive most of the attention at the moment at the international level. And this is especially uh, true if we, uh, as we did in this project, focus on the low cost, so providing affordable, healthy food. As you know, the healthy food within this project was uh, a processed or, processed or semi-processed food with a good nutrient profile or a good nutritional density. And this was, uh, uh, had to be given uh, to the food chain actors because that was not absolutely something obvious in their view. And we will see this is a narrow of action for the policy. What we did in the project, in the rural project, we did interview consumers. We carried out around uh, 3,000 interviews overall through in the whole project. Um, so we interviewed both the consumers and the retailers and manufacturers. Uh, the interviews for uh, the food chain actors were carried out in, at, the, at the beginning of uh, 2012. The countries involved were Finland, Serbia, Italy, and Lithuania. UK was supposed to be in here, but as you all know, uh, it kind of dropped out from this part and from other part of the project. Um, the, we, covered both, uh, we covered both SMEs and retailers, so uh, both SMEs and big manufacturers and retailers. Um, that is to say, we try to really have a view of an overview of all the actors uh, active in the manufacturing of food. Um, 
which sectors were involved. As you know, uh, as, you, as you saw at the beginning of the morning, all different uh, um, food sectors were involved. So we see uh, the dairy, the cereals, the, the fruit and veg, um, and so the, the meat. So all the different sectors were uh, covered. The attempt was not to have a bias in one food sector. So what we did was to really have an overview, to so have some, some of them, so some of them were belong were small, but uh, they were like uh, specifically targeting dairy food. Some others were meat and they were big. So we tried to cover the mixed, you know, all the different uh, crosses possible. For the retailers as well, we, uh, we interviewed both uh, discount retailers, we interviewed uh, big, like national uh, value retailers and more commercial, like classic retailers. Okay, <laughs> so we, again, we tried to cover all the different sectors, as we, as we will see, and we can go more in details in the discussion. The feedbacks we got from the different uh, groups were actually quite interesting. There were different feedbacks from uh, from the different uh, typologies of interviewees. I go straight to the results because I think this is the most uh, relevant uh, uh, given this is the final conference. So the, the food chain, overall, it is interested in having low cost healthy food, but definitely is very cautious. They're not uh, uh, fully able, fully like ready to go for this kind of, this kind of food. Um, from a, an economic or marketing perspective, this is the so-called introduction stage. Within a curve, they, they're still at the very beginning, so they don't see, they're, they're afraid of, of a flop. So they're afraid that the curve doesn't go up if we think that the curve is actually the turnover. So they're still at the beginning. Yes, okay, we can innovate, we can stay in the, in the market, uh, but we want to see what the others are doing. Is anybody who's actually successful at this stage and at this moment, no one is really successful in introducing in the market local healthy food. So introduction stage is, means, uh, uh, okay, we're ready, but we'll still see if innovation for the private sector is really very much, if it, is a, it wants to be success, successful, it is mainly on a me too process. That is copying what the others are doing. It's not so much innovating, it's not breakthrough innovation, uh, it's not an iPad, right? It's not something which is, did not exist before, but it's, let's see what the others are doing, okay, works, and then we include it in our offer. Um, so the newness, the newness of this uh, new market prevents from really fully defining a strategy of action. Uh, they're, they're like looking at the market from the outside, they see the barriers, but they still don't see how to move forward. So they're still at the very beginning. Food manufacturers and large retailers, uh, even though, I mean, if you worked with them, you know they're very, it's very difficult to get uh, uh, an interview from a big food manufacturers, and it's extremely difficult to get retailer involved in this kind of activities. And this is, a, this is a, one of the outcomes for us was that this is a very sensitive issue. Because um, somehow large retailers, uh, especially discount retailers, I have to say, they have policies uh, uh, which were saying, okay, I'll give you the interview, but could you please uh, anticipate the, the, interview, uh, the interview structure? Mm -hmm. And then they will call him back saying, well, you know, this, I, I'll talk to my manager. This is still, is, it is in our uh, strategic planning, so we still don't know whether we want to give you our information. So it was very sensitive issue, which means, uh, you know, they're thinking about it in a way. Okay, the very first thing, something I've never heard during the whole day, is that healthy food has to be good. <laughs> I mean, it's very as simple as that. This is the first worry that the food industry has. Healthy food is still way too far in the image of the consumers from tasty. Healthy food is not tasty in the, in the, in the consumer's view. This is obviously the fear that the, the food industry has. And uh, okay, it's good for our body, nutrition, having well, uh, you know, great, uh, great diet is good, but if it is not good, you will not sell it. So in their view, the first thing to do is to think that healthy food has to get closer, the image of healthy food has to get closer to tasty food. <coughs> 
which means at the moment, if we think of traditional food and whether it, it, there is some space to really totally re reformulate traditional food to get, that, to get it more, you know, get it healthier, well, that's a bit, uh, they're still limited interest in this because uh, traditional food is still, is greasy, uh, is fat, is very sugary. Uh, why we sell that kind of food? Because it's actually better, okay? The taste is better. So that's the, the problem that the food industry still has. So great to have uh, um, like a science-based uh, healthy food, but still keep in mind that the, whatever uh, the formula uh, we come out with has to be a good food. Uh, we just talked about the SEN, and it is true. For In their view, one of the way to act is to create private standards. Uh, they're still afraid of competition, as I just said. Uh, so it is true that one of the ways of raising the barriers you know, to market entry for competitors is really to increase uh, private standards, which is not public standards. It's not the EFSA standards. It's really private standards. So this is what retailers always do. Uh, they always set private standards. That's also one of the reasons why some of the countries and some of the small and medium enterprises are not fully able to get into this kind of market. Positioning strategy. Um, I mean, if I really ask you, if you know of a retailer or a food uh, industry, food manufacturing industry, that is really interested or is really positioned or that comes to your mind because they make healthy food, well, very few names probably come out from your name, from your mind in terms of brand names. There are not many brand names which are so strong, especially retailers for sure. Some, some retailers, uh, very like uh, high quality, probably quality, but it's not healthy. So healthy is not at the basis of the positioning strategy, uh, not yet anyway, of um, food industries, so food manufacturers and retailers. Okay, one of the good results that I think we, we got to was the issue of low cost, which is, was at the basis of the overall project, and affordability. Is it a real problem? Are we sure this is a problem? Where in, in the view of the food industry, this is not a real problem. Affordability is a, a real barrier, it's true, but it's not the barrier. It is something still far away. It is uh, an issue in the mind of the consumers, but that's not really the main way to get, like decreasing the price is not the main way to get to uh, rob consumers and low income consumers, and, cons and consumers in general, obviously. So in their perspective, the price, the importance of price is overestimated. It is important, but it, let's not give uh, to the economy or to the price of healthy food the only way to reach the consumer. How can we reach consumer? is to provide them with a well-balanced basket of attributes. This is a kind of marketing concept. Uh, whenever you think of a product, we think of a ba basket of attributes, tangible and intangible, and they all have to be there. <coughs> we cannot think only of, um, well, price or healthy as the main element uh, at the basis of the choice. It, is, has, it has to be a well-balanced basket of food attributes. The price challenge is also related to the cost of production. In the view of uh, the food industry, uh, healthy food uh, uh, holds the paradox of uh, less is more, which means the, the more you take out, if you, there's no fat, <coughs> low fat, salt or sugar, it probably requires higher costs of marketing, so it's production costs we kind of included uh, overall uh, kind of costs, R&D, food processing technologies. Uh, this is somehow is very much related also, also to the kind of uh, industries that we have. If you think of a cooperative, when we asked, uh, they were making hamburger, and I asked them, well, okay, if you had to make a, a healthy hamburger, you know, what would you do? And, you know, she said, it was a woman, she said, well, you know, it depends um, what you actually mean. I said, well, you know, nutrients, and I, I repeated the definition of healthy food. And what she said was, well, if you ask me to add a 20% of vegetables in my hamburger, meat hamburger, I would probably have a problem. But if you ask me to add spices, 
like uh, a barbecue sauce or something, or even a hot pepper, something that, which is probably 1% out of 100% of the overall meat, then doesn't represent a cost for me because I need to sell meat. My job is to sell meat. Why? Especially because in that specific case that we had a cooperative and the owner of the cooperatives were meat producers. So in that case, the meat producers really pushes the overall company to produce a meat hamburger and not a vegetable and meat hamburger. Okay? So we really have to look at you know, what is the main stake of these companies. Probably that's an area where they should probably learn more. Okay? High margin expectations, healthy food, it is a product that companies would like to sell at a uh, high price because they expect to have a high margin expectation. So far, healthy food was sold at a higher prices compared to other traditional food, like say similar food, uh, which probably would lead to higher profits. Mm? So that was uh, an important aspect, expectations on margin. Another important point is unhealthy food. If you think of an healthy food, the competition of healthy food is not with uh, another healthy, healthy food, it's with unhealthy food. And unhealthy food is good. Unhealthy food at the moment is cheap. Unhealthy food is easy to find. So whenever, whenever we speak of uh, healthy food, uh, well, we, let's think that the consumer, when they go to the retailer, they have a different options. And one is healthy and one is not healthy. And there's so much use to get an healthy food. So this competition is very clear in the mind of the food industry. The stiff competition with an healthy food is very strong. And the financial reward of an healthy food is high. Um, healthy food commands a penetrating price strategy. That means, it's, it's rather than a skimming strategy, that means uh, I want to sell not a lot, but a few at a high price. This is the overall perspective at the moment. They're not used to think of a healthy food as a massive, uh, as a mass consumption product. They're rather thinking of uh, kind of few, really well done, sold at a high price. That's the perspective. Which this, at the end of the day, means that the price challenge is at the basis because it's a source of risk of financial return. It does represent at the moment a high uncertainty for the food industry. So, um, so that's why they're cautious again. And there is a discrepancy probably, uh, as I was saying earlier, on the view that, uh, on the expectations that food manufacturers and retailers have on price and margins and the concrete reality. So we should probably work more on this. In their view, we asked whether they think there is a substantial technological and economic difficulty. Well, uh, overall, not really. It is feasible to do it, but there are two main constraints. One is the high cost of some specific ingredients. And for high cost, it's not only the cost of material, of raw materials, but really the cost is the overall cost, is the cultural change within the company, is the change, is the promotion cost, is the overall cost. And consumers, since they're so used to think of healthy food as an expensive food, the problem is that they, in their perception, the food industry perception, the final price that consumers would have is still of an expensive food. So even if you put it on the market at a cheap price or a lower price, the, they, fear, they fear that the consumers will think that, that that's still too expensive. Hmm? Um, or of a low value. Is one of the two options. So it's still cultural kind of uh, marketing strategy to work on. Food preparation, we could try to get some uh, feedbacks on, you know, we try as, it, it, okay, this activity was carried out at the very beginning of the project. It was the very first uh, uh, WP. So we didn't have any product as such. And it would have been much nicer to interview pizza maker or uh, a dairy maker or a uh, a uh, fruit uh, processed uh, maker, right? But we were at the very beginning. So we tried to push in that direction. And it is true that of the overall, uh, of all the different food preparations that we suggested, RTE, so ready to eat food, was the kind of food uh, mostly um, graded, was mostly appreciated by the food industry as a, a food which was uh, uh, kind of sexy for uh, a raw consumer, a low income, at a low cost. 
So that would be RTE and snack. RTE food, especially if we go more in details in their view, healthy, fresh, and chilled RTE and snacks would be the two kinds of uh, food preparation uh, we could have success in, on the market. So they would go for that kind of uh, product. Yet, I mean, we still have to keep in mind that there is a low compatibility of the image of RTE food with healthy food. They fear that whenever you have an RTE, a ready-to-eat food, uh, that's not very healthy. In, especially, what well, depends on the countries, I'll, I'm providing an overall view, but you know, natural, processed, naturally processed as in cooked at home with the raw materials, that's something healthy. If you provide a pizza, you know, that, that's, in their view is not the image of this RTE food ready to eat, pizza, cooked pizza, already ready to eat pizza, that's not very um, compatible with the image of an healthy food. But this is a perceived. That's perceived, yeah. Perceived and experience. I mean, we have to think of that we interviewed only interview, um, food manufacturers and retailers, obviously, that they sell or they sell either as private label or they sell as the, under their own brand uh, this kind of healthy food, according to the definition. How to commercialize? Well, in their view, private label could be a good uh, way to commercialize healthy food. So if we sell it uh, through uh, private label, there would be ret retailers, store brands, uh, so the Culp uh, brands, for example, that would be a way of uh, uh, convincing the consumer to try and to buy it. Why? Because uh, private label, in the view of the consumer, is often low price. The price of uh, private label products uh, are lower than of not private label products. And the loyalty to the private label would win, uh, on, would win on the, on, on, let's say, on the insecurity that consumers have when, whenever we have a new brand uh, and healthy food and low cost. Promotional offers, this is very common. Um, and discount retailers. Obviously, discount retailers could be a good way. We're thinking, uh, obviously, we have in mind the raw consumers, so we have in mind uh, lower income consumers. From a public policy perspective, uh, food chain actors overall call for public policies. It could be instrumental, for sure. There is a degree you know, of soul-serving view. But still, um, they understand that there is, if we want to get to some substantive re results, we need uh, some uh, public intervention in that. It's, it is the same thing that happened with organic food. They had lots of uh, you know, funding at the beginning. And now, consumers know what organic food is, so they're buying it doesn't really matter, but organic food, you know, through agriculture especially, it was probably funded. The direct involvement of the food system, as I said, even though it's self-serving, you really have to, to see them as, um, as a key actor. We cannot put them out of the, of the framework. They have experience, they have expertise, and they know how to get to the consumer, and they know how to, to speak to retailers if we speak of food manufacturers, which is not always so easy. Another result was the level of awareness and knowledge of the food chain. At the end of the day, what we found out was that the, uh, the uh, awareness and knowledge of the food chain actors, that means food manufacturers and retailers, was not as adequate as probably is needed if we think of uh, commercializing low-cost healthy food. And this is a key issue. This is a, a lot of attention is put on this aspect, and also on policymakers. There's another, you know, at the moment, a lot of uh, uh, political agenda is focused, uh, is, is put on this. Which means, public policy means also limiting access to unhealthy food. You know, if we still have two options. Low cost, uh, unhealthy, low cost, tasty, unhealthy food, and uh, low cost, uh, we, we still don't know whether it's tasty, healthy food, uh, you know, consumer will still go in that direction. So let's try to diminish the, uh, the accessibility to an healthy food. 
and to promote healthy food, so to go directly in the, into the direction of promoting healthy food. Uh, so far, as you see, I very much focused on the price that would be low cost uh, rather than the target. Whenever you do a marketing strategy, you, would, you should have a, a target segment of consumers in mind. So we tried to push them into this ROP uh, target segment. Well, the results were a bit uh, worrying in the sense that uh, the food chain is still not able to fully distinguish a ROP consumers. Um, which is, uh, could be, in the sense that they think the raw consumer has the same uh, market potential of, uh, um, of a poor consumer, or an extremely poor consumer. In their view, it's pretty much the same thing. And it is not the same thing as we saw in the presentation at the beginning. So is the, the purchasing power is one of the issues, but it's not the same, it's not the only issue, because the, the point is that Consumers, raw consumers, are actually impoverished consumers. This is the key element. Uh, they're not poor, but they were medium uh, society, and now they're getting poor. So they're getting poorer. But they, in their perspective at the moment, is like their people, because that's the, obviously, as we saw at the beginning, the trend in the numbers is extremely uh, increasing. Those were families that were used to eat uh, like average food. We found people that were not able to, they literally said, whenever I think of meat, uh, and in their view, meat is healthy, okay, whatever, you know, whenever we actually, the amount is not, wasn't very clear in their mind. In their view, uh, a, a raw consumer uh, think, uh, well, you know, if I have to, if I really have to, me to eat meat, I would give it first to my children and then eat it myself. I'm not in the position of buying fish anymore. I, can, I used to buy it, and now I cannot buy it anymore. So it's a different, uh, sorry, it's a, it's, a different, uh, it's a different approach to diet, really. Sorry, you're asking? OK. Um, so um, the food chain is still inadequate to fully target raw consumers. To conclude, uh, overall, what we found, there is an overall uh, plausible disenchantment, this is how we called, of food chain actors. Food chain actors are not still fully ready to really get into this market. They are they're still you know, a bit distant. Uh, their strategy, their corporate strategy, is still far, you know, if we see, look at the overall view, they're far, they're far from these alarming social and health trends is not in their agenda, which is pretty, um, which makes sense, but they still do not address this as a, mar as a market strategy, as a market opportunity. Hmm? So the, in, in this overall view, with, we have to think of the private sector as an instrumental, as instrumental to a wider social and political goal. Okay, it is not an enemy, it, is, it has to become an ally which means a stronger public-private cooperation. Hmm? Capability to distinguish which are the most prominent barriers, but limited capability to prioritize solutions. So as this is very classic. So they, they know what are the problems, but they still don't know how to solve these problems. Um, the only one that could, could have a prominent initiating role are actually big, big food manufacturers and large retailers. We cannot expect small and medium enterprises to fully act on this area. We need to act with the big, uh, bigger, uh, bigger food manufacturers. At the moment, there is limited efforts from the food chain towards a massive consumption of healthy food. Healthy food is still a niche market. It is increasing, but it is not in the main uh, agenda, which means that the competition is not really to expect, uh, is not expected to rise rapidly, and competition is at the basis of some of these, uh, uh, let's say, increasing trends of production and marketing activity. This is the very last slide. Um, the focus on food consumption to reduce, uh, is to reduce the related health system costs. Okay, this is the final aim of the overall view that we presented today, which means that the food system has to become a structural driver. The driver has to be the food system. If we want to really get 
to uh, substantial change in this uh, consumer's diets, we have to go to come across the food system's uh, stakes and interests. Um, which means the reduction of food inequalities through the reduction of the barriers limiting healthy food consumption. So this is the food policy uh, point in the future, which means also intersector implications. There are strong intersector implications, as we see today, even in the, pro the project itself. We needed all different kinds of uh, expertise. Uh, so going from health and nutrition to economics and policy, we really all of them have to work together. Uh, so, in the future, we'll have to think of healthy eating on a budget. And uh, the last point I want to make is that uh, in the US and in Europe, it is increasing this connection between healthy food, nutrition, local economy, and territorial development. So, we have to push a bit forward the thinking, our thinking, and to get into this territorial development. That's what we have with farmers' market. This is what we have. So the increase of uh, consumption in in a view in a veggie and fruit, okay, increasing the consumption, and that goes also through these uh, developments. School programs. If we want to get healthy food at schools, we also have to think that some of the provision of the food that is given at the kids at school is probably going through this territorial development. So getting the territory involved in this kind of program. Okay. Thank you very much.